Kyle Klingman with Track Wrestling. We have what I think is the best strength and conditioning coach for wrestling on planet Earth. His name is Gary Calcano. He's with Oklahoma State Strength and Conditioning. And I don't know, does John Smith even know how to pronounce your last name yet? <laughs> no, I don't think he does. I think one time, there's been literally one time in 19 years that he's pronounced it right. And he's Italian. <laughs> That's, you know, he, he's, he's half Italian. His mom is full blood so that, that's the funny part about it so no I don't think so let's talk philosophy first about the proper way to train for wrestling and, and to build strength the right way because there are some misconceptions about just doing an insane amount of push-ups or pull-ups or as you've talked about maybe using a weight training for the weight cut overall philosophy on the best way to build strength for wrestling so that you can perform at your highest level? I, my number one philosophy always goes back to power and explosion because it transcends all sports. Whether you're a wrestler, football player, basketball player, even now you look at uh, golfers like Matthew Wolf that golfed here at Oklahoma State that's having success on the PGA Tour. It's people that can extend their hips that have power. Well, if you're not naturally powerful like a John Smith or Alex Daring or someone like that, then obviously you've got to create it, which is most people. So if you're not doing something on your feet, large muscle group, multi-joint lifts, i.e. the Olympic lifts, and then obviously squatting, then no matter what sport it is, you're going to not be as powerful as the next guy. And then I think the one thing that's helped me, I didn't wrestle, even though I'm super short, but I think just tapping into Coach Smith and Pat and Mark Branch and Guerrero and Perry and Esposito and everybody that's been here coaching staff wise, you know, I picked their brain as far as, you know, what do you think, what do you think that's been beneficial for you? And it all goes back to everybody with heavy hips, as you like to hear it in the wrestling world, you know, well, if you're a heavy hip guy, then you've got great power and explosion. So to me, it sets up perfect for being on the platform and performing those multi-joint lifts. Let's take John Smith and Pat Smith as examples. Just to look at them, you aren't probably impressed, but like, wow, they have amazing physiques, but they have results that are off the charts. Four-time NCAA champion, of course, John Smith, six-time world and Olympic champion. How, from your vantage point, were they able to be successful despite what might be some visual limitations? I think, um, obviously, the part that I just touched on, which I'll go over here in a second, but the other part with those guys is they have great functional strength. And people ask, well, what is, what's functional strength mean? It, it means this is the part that I like best about being a strength coach as well. Yes, it's important to – be able to move weight in the weight room but if no matter again what sport it is whether it's wrestling or football or whatever we all know those guys that can put a lot of weight on the bar and move a lot of weight bench press or squat wise but then when they get to their chosen sport they just don't have it well usually that means they don't have functional strength that means they can't relate or translate to their sport where coach smith and pat smith and, and Leroy Smith all have great functional strength. When you're grabbed by Coach Smith, you know, like, immediately, uh, this guy's different. You can just feel it. His hands, his wrists, his grip strength, I mean, everything is just, ah. Well, Pat's the exact same way. Leroy was the exact same way. And then it relates and translates to their sport because they can move their body or someone else's body while doing a sport and now if, if you were to max test those guys in the weight room their numbers would probably be pretty good probably pretty standard but the number one thing is what do you do with it on the mat or court 
or field. And that's another reason why, you know, a long time ago, and I think I've told you this story, if I haven't, uh, I'll tell you when I said something about, well, coach, what do you think about, you know, max testing for our wrestlers? And he kind of gave me that, you know, that kind of look and, and you know, the one I'm talking about this deal. And he goes, the only thing I care about is whether they get their hand raised at the end of a match. And right then I knew yep, he's not into that because it doesn't really tell you anything. We, you know, I've been a, a football strength coach, obviously my entire career and, we've had guys at every place I've been that could squat and bench a house, but never got off the silo. They were over there by me, you know, during the game. And that doesn't do anybody any good, but the bottom line is, you know, they couldn't transfer it to the field. So it all happens too with, you know, your hip strength and your hip power, your hip girdle has to be strong. And realistically it's what, um, you and I were talking about a year or so ago, everybody used to always think about, you know, core, 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 like it was ab and low back, you know, 15, 10, 15 years ago. Well, in reality, that's core is not a new word. And core is really from below your pec to the top of your knee. That's your core. So in other words, if you draw a bullseye in the middle of your body, you know, that hip area, if that's not strong first, then nothing's going to be strong. Let's break down some themes that have been <laughs> very prevalent in wrestling. One of those is pick up a weight and move it any way you can. Just pick it up whether you have to bend your back or you have to have poor form. Dispel those myths or maybe you like that. Maybe that's something that you're okay with to move the weight around any way you can. I think that no, I don't like that just because of the simple fact of you know, putting your student athletes in harm's way. And I get where an old strength coach, uh, wrestling strength coach mentality would be like, well, that's the way they do it on the mat. Well, I'm with you, but, you know, not everything is that translatable as far as that goes. It's not just you – can, you can get the same thing by doing great technique and keeping your student athletes healthy because if something – God forbid what happened in the weight room. The last thing a strength coach wants is their student athlete to get hurt in the weight room and have to go tell, you know, Mike Gundy or John Smith, uh, we've got a problem. Well, I think that old school mentality was there because all along the years since strength conditioning is really relatively new since Boyd Epley in 1969 at, at Nebraska. Well, a lot of the wrestling strength coaches were former wrestlers that just did their stuff on their own. So that's all they really knew. Well, now it's gotten to be a deal where you look across most of the uh, landscape, most wrestling programs have a certified, qualified strength conditioning coach that's going to say that is an older mentality and we don't subscribe to that. What is the best way to build strength for wrestling then? I, I think, I think it's, it's twofold. One, you've got to do all your Olympic movements and you've got to do a ton of leg work. And then, you know, you got a clean snatch jerk, you got a clean and jerk, you got to make sure that you're, if, if you just look, if you take a bar from the floor and you do a power clean and jerk, or you do from your hang and you do a clean and jerk, that is the most across every sport. You're getting your triple extension of your hip, knee, and ankle, and you're actually going over your head with it as well to where your entire body is getting used. Plus, you're on your feet, large muscle group, multi-joint. And the other piece about it that I haven't even addressed yet is the hormonal response and the adaptations, hormonal adaptations you get into your body by doing those lifts first. So it's going to translate to help you basically grow. It's going to release testosterone and and naturally occurring human growth hormone in your body. And then the other piece that, that you want to make sure you do that I think is the best way to train for a wrestler is when they get done with a, uh, whether it's a power clean or a rack clean or a front squat or a back squat or a split squat, then go right over and do box jumps or burpee box jumps or 
dumbbell box jumps or they're coming off a bench press and you make them do clap push-ups or med ball push-up. The last thing you want that muscle group to remember is the power and explosion phase. It's really CNS training, what they call central nervous system training. The last thing you want that muscle group to remember is the pop, not the slow strength movement. Where does the bench and curls and tricep extensions, where does that fit in your philosophy? I think, I think it's, I, I do think it's important. You've got to have upper body musculature, absolutely. But, you know, if you look at it as, you know, your found, if you look at it as a pyramid, your foundation is going to be the Olympic lifts, then it's going to be all your leg work, and then it's going to be your, your back work, and then it's going to be um, your upper body work, and then last is going to be your finishers, which is going to be your bicep curls and your tricep pushdowns or your push-ups or uh, tricep extensions, you know, but that foundation's got to be there of the Olympic movements first and your leg stuff to where it goes like this, the top. The last thing you're going to do to leave at the end of the day, as far as for us, is, yeah, you're going to blow those arms out to where you get the feel of, I've been through uh, a full wrestling match to where you've got that blown feeling. But that can't be the first thing you do. You know, it, th there's got to be a tier. There's got to be a process. That's got to be the last thing you do when you leave. How about differences between males and females? Should you train different? Absolutely not. Exact same way. And, and it's funny, too. I, you know, I had a really good uh, boss years and years ago when I started at the University of Tulsa that used to say that, you know, the human body is the human body no matter what. And now you look, well, that was years before CrossFit. Well, now – Back when you and I were growing up, most female athletes, you know, oh, I don't want to lift. I'll bulk up. Well, now you look, all you got to do is get on Instagram and scroll through and, and you see a zillion CrossFit females that are rocked up and they love being that way. Well, you know, when I started in this business 30 years ago, no female wanted to lift. They, they ran from it. But the high level ones they got in there and they cleaned and snatched and jerked and they did their, their squats because it's all relative They're No, they're not going to be handling the same weight as a man. They don't have to. It's just, they've got to handle weight that is, you know, applicable for them. So no difference at all. Did you train Helen Merlis while she was down there for a spell? No, well, she came in the weight room a couple of times and that was back when I, I think that she was still kind of trying to decide whether she wanted to, continue wrestling or not and and I, I thought she was going to be here and and made her up a workout and then she left and then I, I think she resurfaced back on the east coast and and I was happy to see her um winning about a month ago you know back into it again so that's awesome but no not really I mean we talked a couple times but she wasn't around that much to to where I really got to be around her extensively we're on lockdown right now. How about some tips and some ideas for wrestlers to maintain their strength and conditioning through this really unprecedented time? I think um, if, if you go back, we're almost going back to when you and I were kids and you saw everybody our age, our parents would kick us out of the house and say, go play. And so you were you were just really moving your body in space at all times, whether you were playing pickup basketball or sandlot football or you were just playing, you know, whatever. You're running and tumbling and moving and, you know, you were on the monkey bars. I mean, everybody remembers our age. I'm 50, but you remember what the, the school play, playground looked like. Well, now that's a CrossFit gym. You know, you had the monkey bars and all that type stuff. Just go find a playground and do human body movement stuff. That's, to me, the best thing you can do because it's – which kind of – I'm going to go slide back for a minute as far as another piece about the Olympic lifting thing, uh, movements that people always forget. When you're moving the bar, doing the Olympic movements, you're working on your core – and you're working on all your connective tissues and all your uh, joint stability and joint integrity. And that I think is what 
right now we can go back to as far as go out and just move around do you know prisoner squats and jump squats and tuck jumps and find a bar and do pull-ups or a tree limb and do pull-ups and do push-ups and do diamond push-ups single arm push-ups handstand push-ups to mimic a shoulder press um uh, lunge jumps just move your body in space and get back to the what we used to do as kids and i think you'll see a little bit more overall athletic uh group of people come back after this i think this is uh it, to me you got to find the positive in everything and and maybe somebody needs that little cardiovascular kick to where they've been in the weight room and they go through a weight workout will you go through one of our body weight workouts that i made for our guys and our uh um, you know, a couple of our Montavo did it and Austin Harris did it and, and it'll blow you up. It's just stuff that they maybe aren't used to doing and just go run, you know, go. What I like to say too, is for our guys, especially with wrestlers, you need to be able to move your body in space. It just makes you a better athlete. So high knee skips or a skip, B skip, backward skip, lateral skip, high knee karaoke, backpedal, backward run, sidestep shuffle, do your hurdle mobility bit, uh, drills, all those type things in the end will make you a better athlete and a more explosive athlete. All right, just for our entertainment, we need to know who the hardest workers from Oklahoma State Wrestling Program are and who the strongest guys are, whether they worked hard or not, like just that absolute power you say, this dude is really strong. Who are some of those guys that come to mind? Uh, hardest workers, man. I mean, I've been blessed because of the program that I've been a part of. And, and I said this years ago when I was speaking at the, um, our CSCCA national convention, I'm a really good strength coach when you get to train Alex Derringer, Chris Pendleton, Zach Esposito, Steve Mako, um, uh, Coleman Scott, Dean Heil, and all those type guys. So well, let me just be clear on that. I've been blessed to be at the place I'm at. Um, super strong guys. Uh, Z, you know, Alan Gelogayev uh, was just ridiculously strong. He could pull from the floor 320, power clean, 335 easily. I mean, like it was nothing. I mean – that guy conceivably, if I could, if I would have maxed him, he could have pulled 405 from the floor. And some of those guys that are around his age, like Caldwell and Perry, they could, they can tell you they were. He'd be on this first platform right here, you know, pulling 335 from the floor like it was 225. Hmm. Um, Preston Weigel, another one, just freakishly strong. And you know, his dad did a great job training him when he was. In high school, he did a lot of functionally strong, function, functional strength stuff because his dad has a farm. And he he was very, very, very strong, super strong. Um, another guy, obviously, that would come to mind for you is Alex Derringer was just – Alex and, and Johnny Hendricks, to me, are very, very similar uh, body type and just how they're wired. They were wired for supreme power and explosion. Both those guys were were frighteningly strong. Uh, a lower weight guy that was really strong that, you know, I think a lot of his, because his levers were long, even though he was shorter, is Coleman Scott. He's got long arms and legs and he, he was he was wired for power as well for a smaller guy. He could pull 225 from the floor easily on power clean. <laughs> so, um, hardest working guys, you know, one of my all-time favorite guys that just was a grinder is Neil Arisman, the head coach at, at Arkansas Little Rock. I mean, geez, you're not, there's not going to be many guys that will talk. And I think every one of the guys would say the same thing about him, you know. So, it doesn't surprise me that he's a head coach in college wrestling right now because that's the type of person he is um another guy that worked very very strong was very 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 hard was very very strong as well uh, that just got a head job was chris pendleton 
super strong. You know, kind of the same as Coleman. Longer arms and legs, had great joint stability, and could move his body in space. Very, very good. Um, another guy that always scared me and, and still does to this day because – just functionally as strong as anybody as I've ever been around. And to me, not enough people talk about this guy. This guy should be in the National Wrestling Hall of Fame, uh, Jake Rochal. Mm. Three-time champ, lost one time. The one time he didn't win, he finished third, just would just beat people up. One of the first guys to get the UFC contract out of Oklahoma State Wrestling, you know, finally had to retire because he broke his hands many times. But uh, that guy's freaky. How about a couple of guys like Chris Perry, who's part of the, of course, Smith lineage there with uh, with Kathy Perry or Perry? Um, did he work hard? Was he strong? He worked super hard. One thing that Chris Perry did that not many people know: his last two years when he was virtually unbeatable, he would come back at night. And he would run, whether on the treadmill, up in the wrestling room, or he would go out basically on the roads in Stillwater. And he would go a morning practice, an afternoon practice, and then he would run at night as well to keep his weight down. But just that, that mental, you know, just that mental piece that he was doing, almost like what his uncle did, hey, I'm going to work out when nobody else is, that to me put – Chris Perry, you know, up there with everybody else because he just did it on his own. In the weight room, him and Caldwell that summer, they – both those guys worked very, very hard and were very, very strong. And then another guy, I don't know if you really had him as an athlete, but Daniel Cormier. Oh, uh, I – when I got here, Daniel was, you know, still wrestling for us as far as on a, the world stage. So, he was – he had just finished. I took over wrestling. Uh, basically from Coach Smith, and he he would come down and work out, and you could just tell his power was unbelievable. He could he he'd get on the box jumps and pop up on the highest level without any problem at his size. And one time I asked him, I said, "Golly, dude, you you've got unbelievable power." He goes. Well, you know, Coach G's like, I, I played football in high school. You know, I, I was a pretty good high school football player. Well, he was a really good high school football player, actually. So, I, I think, you know, he, deep down, he's a football junkie. You know, he's – but he played linebacker, and they, he was a really good football player, as long, just like Chris Perry. Chris Perry was a great high school football player here at Stillwater High. Was very, very good. Probably could have played both sports for us here just because he would ram the ball into the line at Stillwater High with not a whole lot of blocking. He would have been a great cowboy back, fullback for us. But Cormier, unbelievable power. Unbelievable. Jerry, thanks for taking the time with us to talk about strength and conditioning and then reminisce a little about some of the great Oklahoma State wrestlers through the program. But I appreciate this, and I know that people are interested in how to build strength the right way and to – occupy their time with great strength and conditioning throughout this quarantine. Well, uh, thank you for having me on and uh, you stay safe and don't be afraid to attach my uh, email to this in case somebody wants to reach out to me. I do appreciate it. Kerr. Yes, sir. Kyle, be safe.